Hey everybody, PCB Junkie here, back with another video. Today I have in front of me uh, an old Sony CRT TV, which I got in uh, in order to display a 15 kilohertz video signal from uh, from an arcade uh, project that I'm working on. Getting an arcade monitor uh, these days is, is still quite uh, expensive, and uh, they're not very common, so figure why not uh, get an old uh, CRT TV that nobody wants and uh, modify it uh, to do basically the same thing now uh, obviously these TVs are pretty much uh, unloved these days people can't wait to uh, toss them into the garbage and replace them with a, a newer smaller LCD panel uh, and that's quite understandable but uh, there's still a couple things that these TVs are good at and, and uh, that's mostly uh, related to uh, retro gaming or arcade gaming. Um, some uh, consoles uh, won't look quite right on a new LCD panel. Uh, games that uh, require a light gun won't work on a newer LCD panel. So um, there's still a little bit of use for TVs like this and uh, uh, now that they're uh, not in much demand uh, they can be uh, gotten for for next to nothing uh, and they're only gonna get uh, less and less common going forward so I figured let's grab a TV like this and uh, and modify it to accept RGB now this particular TV uh, cost only about five dollars I got this from Kijiji the guy that uh, uh, was getting rid of it um, if, uh, he posted an ad before tossing it and uh, I ended up uh, grabbing it and I uh, saved it from the landfill. This particular TV is actually quite easy to mod and uh, along the way uh, I figured uh, why not make a video to discuss this in a little bit more detail. So that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna have a look at the, the types of TVs that are out there, uh, what to look for, and a TV uh, for a mod like this and how to actually do the mod effectively so that the next person that attempts this uh, just has a, an easier time doing it. So there are a number of different TVs. Of course each one uh, may require a different approach in order to be able to accept external RGB signals. The best type of TV for this type of project would be one that um, has some sort of a free RGB input. Um, and that would be perhaps a TV that has uh, an un unpopulated SCART port. Uh, could be a TV that was uh, manufactured for both the North American and the European region. And it just happens to have a port that uh, we can interface with. Uh, perhaps uh, another type of TV would have an unused RGB input, a switchable component in RGB input that is just simply not used. Finally, uh, this is also a decent candidate, is a TV that has some sort of an external closed caption decoder circuitry. Uh, typically those uh, output RGB and uh, that RGB can then be mixed in with the existing video. The TV that I have that I'll be showing you um, is this type of TV. Basically that's how I got the TV to accept RGB. Another perhaps less effective way of uh, feeding in the RGB signal into a TV would be through the on-screen display method. Uh, a lot of TVs have a separate circuit for on-screen display that uh, outputs RGB and is then mixed inside of the uh, YC Jungle chip as an overlay on the existing video or uh, tuner output. So this, this will work just fine and in fact uh, I think this is uh, how the majority of the TVs are modded. Uh, the only problem is that uh, once the on-screen display is disabled it may have to be enabled uh, again in order to make adjustments to the TV. So uh, this would probably require a switch to be added so that the on-screen display can be re-enabled again uh, for adjustments. And finally, the least ideal way of getting our TV to display RGB signal would be to feed our signal into the neck board 
so that bypasses pretty much all of the circuitry of the TV and uh, disables any sort of adjustments. Uh, so this is uh, pretty much the worst possible way. And it, it, it's only done uh, when you have no other choice. Uh, so when you have a TV that doesn't have any RGB inputs or um, uh, a newer TV, for example, could have all of its RGB mixing circuitry inside of the uh, YC Jungle chip. And uh, there's no way to simply interface with that signal. So uh, a chip like this uh, would only accept YUV or uh, component input or simply composite input and uh, do all its mixing for on-screen display, closed captioning internally and then simply output the RGB signal into the neck of the tube. Uh, honestly, if I had a TV like this, I wouldn't even bother with this mod. Uh, in fact, I had a TV like that. My sister gave me uh, a JVC, which uh, was of this type. And uh, I gave up on that TV and uh, uh, tossed it into the garbage. It just wasn't worthwhile. I mean, it's still possible to do it this way. It's still possible to feed the signal directly into the neck board uh, of that TV. But uh, like I said, it's... Uh, your results may vary. You may get an image that is too dark or too bright with no way to adjust it unless you modify the circuit on that neck board. And, uh, you know, it may be a crapshoot and you may be wasting your time. So I wouldn't even attempt it, honestly, if you have to, if you have to do this. Uh, just try to look for a TV from maybe uh, uh, this of this type or this type um, and save yourself the trouble. Before you go out and get yourself a TV to mod, uh, do yourself a favor and check the schematic diagrams or the service manual to make sure that the TV that you're about to get can be modified to accept an RGB signal. Uh, this JVC that I had earlier just wasn't worth the time, to be honest, and um, I'll show you exactly why by scrolling down to the block diagram. So here we can see that uh, the TV can accept a number of inputs. We have our uh, compo composite video and audio and also our component inputs uh, and the audio signal which is uh, fed through an audio video switch chip and uh, then the uh, chroma luma separator uh, which basically just uh, converts all of the composite uh, input into a S video type output, um, which is then fed into the all in one Chroma Jungle chip and everything else. And uh, there's simply no other inputs here except for this one YC input. And the other is the uh, component input that's fed directly into this chip. And this chip uh, simply does all of its processing, all the on-screen display mixing, and uh, outputs the RGB signal that is then uh, fed directly into the neck board and then the tube itself. So here's an example of a TV that can be modified using the on-screen display. This is from a uh, Toshiba. Uh, as you can see here, the only available inputs are either the component inputs or just the standard video or S-video inputs. But uh, there's an additional input right here, an RGB input that's used for the on-screen display. So in order to use this, we'd have to sever these lines and uh, feed in our signal through here. Um, if there are any passive components or termination, uh, those should be reused as well as the chip uh, likely requires it. And uh, finally, in order to enable the signal, this line would have to be the switch, the high or low, depending on uh, what this chip requires. Um, so you may need to put in a switch uh, to sever these lines and feed in your signal or possibly re-enable the on-screen display for adjustments. And of course, this would be switchable as well. So here's the service manual for the uh, Sony TV that we'll be modifying in this video.
I'm going to scroll down to the uh, block diagram and show you exactly uh, what I think uh, we need to do in order for this TV to accept RGB signals. Here's the block diagram for the YC jungle chip inside of the Sony. Uh, this uh, chip has two uh, RGB inputs, one used for the on-screen display and another one which is used for the closed captioning. Um, this one is an analog input. I believe one uh, volt peak to peak, and this is a uh, TTL level input, uh, digital input, although I haven't really probed it uh, because I really don't want to mess with it. Um, this line is used to select between the RGB inputs and the video inputs that are uh, fed in through these pins of the chip. So we'll use this line and force the TV to display RGB only, ignoring um, the video input. Um, I may put in a switch to be able to toggle between the two. Uh, it's uh, just controlling the one line. It seems pretty easy. And then um, this uh, chip does whatever is required to get the colors uh, looking nice for the uh, the CRT, uh, which is uh, which goes out to the neck of the tube through these pins right here. In addition to our video signal, uh, we also have to feed in a sync signal and uh, typically that would be done through these two pins the horizontal and the vertical sync but um, I need to feed uh, this TV a, uh, a combined sync signal which I'm hoping to uh, feed through one of these video inputs and have it flow through this uh, circuit right here and uh, through the sync separator and be automatically fed into these pins. Now, ideally, they can all be done through this header right here. This is the header to the closed caption board. And uh, this header has all the relevant pins available. Uh, the RGB pins are right here. The YS control pin is here as well. And I'm hoping that the video pin can be used to uh, feed in the sync as well, but uh, it may only be an input pin for the uh, closed caption decoding. So I'll have to experiment with that and uh, see if I can get it working this way. In the data sheet for the Sony uh, YC Jungle, uh, it clearly states that a capacitor must be used uh, when feeding the signal into the RGB uh, analog inputs of this chip and uh, the values that it has here are 10 microfarads for each of these inputs. Uh, when looking at the schematics uh, for the closed caption board I see the exact same values. So this is the values I'll be using as well in my uh, in my own circuit and uh, in my own circuit I'll also be terminating each of these inputs to ground via a 75 ohm resistor. And that's typically done to uh, improve the signal, the incoming signal quality. So our closed captioning board is uh, just simply plugged in through a header into the main board of the monitor uh, TV. Um, where it just looks like we're going to be able to remove this fairly easy and uh, substitute it for something else that's going to feed our RGB signals in. Um, there are a couple control lines there, um, there's an on-off uh, line and um, also there is a video line which I'm hoping to use to feed the sync signal into it but um, looking at the data sheet it looks like that uh, may be an input pin to this uh, board and uh, it may not work but uh, I'll give it a shot and see what happens and uh, Maybe uh, everything will be fed through that uh, through that header right there. That would be awesome. Okay, so uh, I'll do a little bit of experimenting and come back and uh, see what we get. So here we have our closed caption board. Really not much to it. Um, looks like a Zilog chip. Uh, not sure if it's a microcontroller or what, but... Uh, that's really all there's to it. It's um, you know, it's it's uh, doing whatever magic is required to uh, get the text on the screen, and then uh, that RGB output simply uh, goes out. Um, 
terminated and and pass through these capacitors into the into this header a female header and it makes its way back to the TV where it's mixed in with the rest of the video and, uh, and so we get the text on the screen I guess what I tried doing there is uh, get these wires out of the way what I tried doing there is uh, feeding a uh, sync signal uh, into this TV um, so I have it uh, terminated as well with uh, some with the 75 ohm resistor, and then uh, pass it through a capacitor. I, I try with a, with a capacitor and without, and um, it has no effect. So feeding the uh, sync signal into the video pin through that uh, through that header um, doesn't do anything. So I built this little board using a piece of a prototyping board. We're feeding our RGB signals in. Uh, they're terminated via these uh, three 75 ohm resistors to ground. And that is then fed through the 10 uh, microfarad capacitors into the appropriate pin of the closed caption board. The resistor uh, up here, the 10K resistor, is used to uh, pull up the uh, mode uh, of operation to uh, RGB. And um, I have a wire coming out of here, the orange one, which is going to be tied to a toggle switch. And that will allow me to toggle the mode of the TV between RGB and video. So after a little bit of drilling and soldering, this is what we have on the back of the TV. We have our DIN input socket, which is how the RGB signal is fed into the TV. I'm sure I could have reused some of these... Uh, inputs but uh, I actually want to keep the TV functionality intact for now at least uh, gonna use this for um, a bench test setup uh, at least for the next little while so I want to keep the uh, uh, the RF and the video input functionality intact um, anyway the five pins uh, on that DIN socket correspond to the RGB signals the sync and the ground then here I install the uh, button uh, the toggle button which will switch the TV between the RGB modes and the regular video mode alright so uh, let's have a look at the wiring so basically our DIN socket uh, wires are just fed straight into that board that I put together and that board just plugs right into that uh, uh, closed caption socket board um, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it now, of course there's the button there uh, that button allows us to switch that mode and that uh, the button goes into that socket as well and finally we have our sync signal which is that uh, yellow wire and that just goes into the video 3 input so the TV in order to operate and in order to sync in RGB uh, will have to be switched to input 3 so that's uh, that's pretty much it. Let's move to the front and uh, see what the uh, picture looks like. All right. So I have the TV running on video three. Uh, let me connect the Raspberry Pi and uh, show you the the result. Here's a little bit of Sonic in RGB. Looks pretty good, if I say so myself. Now keep in mind that this isn't uh, pixel perfect. Uh, I don't think the resolution on the Raspberry Pi matches the uh, the resolution of the Sega Genesis. So there's some pixel interpolation. Uh, but, I mean, I can't really complain. The quality of the image is, is quite good. So um, I guess I'll assemble the TV and uh, move it into my lab and uh, continue using it for testing. So anyway, if you enjoy this, let me know and uh, I may continue to do more videos. Okay, thanks a lot. See you on the next one.